Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 10 students who are working on their summative questions. It's the first section in the quadratic relations part of your questions and it's labeled question number nine. So let's look at it. It says, the height of lava ejected from the Stromboli volcano can be modeled by this equation where height is h is height in meters of lava above the volcano crater and t is the time in seconds since it was ejected and it says to sketch a graph of the relationship find the maximum height how long does it take to reach the maximum height and is the length of time that the lava is in the air twice the answer from c so let's start here obviously um, and talk a little bit more about quadratic relations because obviously if you multiply this out you're going to have t times t which is t squared and that makes this a quadratic relation now there are three different forms of quadratic relations they're standard form factored form and vertex form so let me make sure you understand what they are so here's the standard form of a quadratic relation here's the factored form of a quadratic relation and here's vertex form um, so it's important that you know which form you were given so that you know what it is that you're supposed to do in order to answer your question. So let me just clear away some of that writing so you can make it very clear. When I look at this equation, it's pretty clear that this is a factored equation, right? So that bracket, there's something's been factored outside of it. Um, another way of telling that you have factored form is you don't see anything that has squared on it. Um, and, but t times t would give me t squared, so it's definitely quadratic, but the form itself doesn't say t squared, and that must mean it's factored. Um, but let's make sure, let's talk about all three of these in any way, just in case. Um, so if I was given standard form, what would I do next? And if I was given factored form, etc. So let's go through these. So if I was given standard form, and I was told sketch a graph, this is what I would do. I would find the y-intercept. Well, that's always the easiest thing to do in standard form because it's always this number right here. And then, well, there's not much else you can do except for algebra. Then you either try to factor it and or you try to complete the square. In other words, really, if you're given standard form, you can do one thing easily, find the y-intercept, and after that, you either turn it into factored form or you turn it into vertex form. So standard form in a way is the meanest form to give you, but also it's the form that requires you to demonstrate your knowledge of math um, most effectively. So this is what I would have to do if I was given standard form. What if I was given vertex form? If I was given vertex form, here's what I would do. I would find the vertex, which is easy to find because it's in vertex form. So my vertex would just be h comma k. Then I would find the y-intercept, just simply sub in zero for x, and then follow the rules of Bedmas to solve for y. And then from there, I would be able to, and let me just do a really quick sketch for you down here. From there, I would know where my vertex, I would have the y-intercept, and then I would look at the value of a in the equation, and I would follow whatever a tells me and in order to find the shape of that particular um, sorry, parabola. So those little steps are me going like over one, down one, over two, down four, you know, the way that you graph a parabola. So that's what I would do if I had vertex form. But this time I have factored form. So here's what I would do in factored form. And factored form is my favorite. That's why we spend so much time teaching you how to factor properly, because we know that factored form is the most useful of the forms of a quadratic relationship. So in factored form, I can easily find the roots. I can use the roots to find the vertex. And of course, I can find the y-intercept by letting x equal 0 and doing the algebra properly to solve for y. So that's what we're going to do in this question. We're going to follow the steps to finding factored form. So again, let's look at the equation. In fact, let's make a copy of it. Oh, no, can't do it. So let's go down to the next slide, h equals, and make sure we have it. So h equals negative 5t bracket t minus 11. Okay, so there's the equation. And again, it's in factored form. So sometimes students um, 
you know, let's look back. Sometimes students really need to see two brackets to understand factored form. So if, if that's you, if your brain kind of likes seeing common patterns, then here's what you do. Put two brackets into your expression. Because now I can say that I have this bracket multiplied by this bracket. Okay, um, I have found through the years that that actually helps a lot of students who kind of get confused. So to find the roots, and roots is another word for x-intercept. Ooh, I put roots. Hmm. Don't find the roots. Hmm. We're going to find the roots. And to find the roots, which are also known in this case as t-intercepts, we let h equals 0. So we're going to let h equals 0. And then how do we solve? So this is the key to factored form. I have two things multiply together that equals 0. So let's review logic, logic, logic. If this bracket was 0, it doesn't matter what this bracket is. 0 times anything is 0. So therefore, if negative 5t equals 0, I have a root, right? If this bracket was 0, 0 times anything is 0, so therefore I've solved, and therefore I have a root. Now, the same thing is true for the other bracket, so let's clear this a little. So this was negative 5t. Now, if this bracket was 0, it doesn't matter what's in this bracket. 0 times anything is 0. So if this bracket was 0, I also have a root. So if t minus 11, oops, minus 11 equals 0, I have a root. Huh. Above me, hold on, somehow I have one of Winnie the Pooh's friends. There we go. So if this bracket was 0, I have a root. If this bracket was zero, I have a root. And that's why we're about to see two roots because there's two possible ways of making this statement here a true statement. So let's clean this up a little bit. That's just theory. Again, it's not actually part of what you would be expected to write. It's just making sure that you understand what we do when we find roots. So again, the first thing we do is we let h equals zero. And then, using the principle of zero multiplication, I say, therefore, negative 5t equals 0, or t minus 11 equals 0. So I take each of my factors, and I set them equal to 0. And now I have two little pieces of math to solve. Here, divide by negative 5, and I get t equals 0. Well, there's one root. Here, add 11, so I get t equals 11. So there's my two roots. So, excellent. Now, what does that mean? Well, so far, what that means is, if I were to start to graph, I could put 0 here, I could put 11 here, and I know that my parabola passes through these points. Good. Now, as I said up here, once I have the roots, I use the roots to find the vertex. So let's review how that works. Um, one of the key properties of any parabola is that it's perfectly symmetric. In other words, it can be folded in half, and it's a perfect <laughs> symmetric object. And what that means is that the midpoint of your roots is an important value. And what is the midpoint of 11 and 0? So add them together, divide by 2. So the midpoint is 11 over 2, or 5.5. Um, so you'll notice I'm using decimals here. That's because in a word problem um, that relates to the real world, in the real world we talk about decimals. So the midpoint is 5.5. And you should know from class that the midpoint represents your axis of symmetry. In other words, your parabola is going to be perfectly symmetrical about this folding line. So. If you were asked, you would say that the axis of symmetry is this line right here. But we weren't asked that. Um, but what's important is that, therefore, your vertex is somewhere on this line. So your vertex 
must have an x value of 5.5. So here's your vertex. It's x equals 5.5 and y equals something. Oh, I guess it's not x, is it? It's um, t and h. So my apologies. Let's fix this. So t equals 5.5. And so that means that we can use this information to find the vertex. So again, here's my formula. It's just the original formula I've given. I haven't done any algebra to it. And we know that the vertex is right here. 5.5 comma something. So this is a value of t that I can sub into the formula anywhere that t is, and that will let me solve for h. So that's my next step. So h equals negative 5t. Oh, oh dear. Pen went out of control. Pen went crazy. Let me fix. Whew, boy, scary things, eh? So h equals negative 5t bracket t minus 11. So again, this is how you do substitution. You write your equation, but instead of writing the, val the letter t, you put a bracket. Then you can substitute into that bracket. So 5.5 and 5.5. And now you just do good math. So remember, this is a giant bracket. So don't lose sight of that. Because according to Bedmiss, I want to do what I can inside this bracket. So I'm going to do 5.5 subtract 11 is negative 5.5. And now I have three things, negative 5, 5.5, and negative 5.5. And those three things are multiplied together. So I'm just going to take out my calculator and multiply them together. So 5 times 5.5 times 5.5. Two negatives made a positive. That's why I didn't even bother typing that in. So I get 151.25 um, meters, I guess. So if we think about our sketch again, now I know my parabola does this. And this point here would be that value I just found, 151.25, right? And I knew already that it went down. Well, I mean, we knew that, right? Because the A value was negative. So now that I have this information, I can try to draw, let's try to draw a pretty decent sketch. And a decent sketch therefore requires that I have a grid. So here's a grid. Um, now I don't have to really worry about negatives because one axis is time and we don't go backwards in time. The other axis is height. And we assume that when the lava hits the surface of the Earth at height equals zero, that it just stops there. So put that in mind. So we're going to put T here. We're going to put H here. We know that we have to go up to 11. So we'll label 5, 10, and 15. And this is in seconds. Height is in meters. Now. The height has to go up to, what was it, 151.25. So obviously I have to choose a different scale. So 50, 100, 150. And here's what I know. I have a root at 0, a root at 11, and a midway point. So a symmetry point, and I'm going to put that on my sketch right at 5.5 and I'll move it over just slightly doot, doot. and that then I can put my vertex right on it at just past 150 because it's 151 point whatever and then I will use some sort of magic skill to do this and do this <clears throat> okay so you uh, let me just wave my magic wand and make that beautiful. Ba -ba -da -da. There it is. <laughs> now, of course, we don't want this graph to go into the negatives and into the positives. So when we start part two, because we have to go on to a second video, you're going to see the beautiful graph again. So I'll see you in video number two for this question.